Today's radio play, number 88 West, is based on a most unusual story which will appear in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly, the magazine distributed with all Hearst's Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. Front page dramas are produced in the studios of the General Broadcasting Company. It is almost claimed that number 88, the Chicago Flyer, stands panning out an impatient tempo at Albany, the first stop. At regular intervals along the black snakes formed by the steel coaches, stand the white-coated porters beside their little yellow steps. Blue uniform brakemen, lantern hooked on their elbows, eyes focused on their watches, wait for the exact position of the minute hand, which will send their free arms waving the signal or high ball to the men leaning expectantly out of the cab windows way up ahead. But piloted by perspiring baggage men, rumble back and forth. Belated passengers scramble for their respective cars, bug-eyed as they look for the numbers displayed in the washroom windows. Calm as the rocks around which a restless sea threshes itself into a futile foam, stand the two veterans of train departures. They are Conductor Hall and Porter Sam Johnson. Most time now, ain't it, Conductor Hall? Just about, Sam. My, my, ain't that a shame? It's a shame that it's almost time to start rolling? No, sir, a shame that I ain't got all of my buds took on this trip. Oh, I see. But I should think you'd like that, Sam. Less bother for you. Uh-uh, that's true, Conductor Hall, that gospel true. What you see at a dime a person for an average, I'll be shy 80 cents and tips on this run when we get to Shy Cargo. <laughs> well, maybe that's why they named it Shy Cargo. <laughs> Now you just trying to kid this boy, Conductor Hall. Uh, 516, Porter. Uh, 515 up ahead, Dawson. I suppose you had a date last night with that Harlem sweetheart of yours, Sam. Yeah, sir, I sure did. Uh-huh. Have a good time? Well, so-so. Why, what was wrong? Doesn't she like you anymore? Oh, she likes me all right enough. But you see, I wanted to stay home for the evening, and she wanted to go dancing. Mm-hmm. Well, what did you finally do? Oh, we, we compromised. We went dancing first, and then I took her home. Try 546 Toy, where's that? Uh, 546 down that way, ma'am. Thank you. This 870, Porter? Yeah, sir, 870 right here, sir. Compartment A. Here, put these bags in and make it snappy. Yeah, uh, sir, compartment A. Yeah, sir, right here, sir. How long before we shove off, Porter? Well, we're due to start rolling in less than five minutes. Good. Hey, oh, it's a compartment A. Shall I put these up here for you, sir? No, no, no. Just leave them there. I'll tend to them. Here. Uh, thank you, sir. Oh, oh, thank you, sir. That's okay. Well, what you all smile from ear to ear about, Sam? Well, I love you, yeah. A silver dollar? Ain't there something? You ain't even started, and I broke even on my tip average and 20 cents a side. That's pretty good, I'd say. Good. <laughs> Conductor Hall, that super metal gorgeous. That's what I call it. Porter. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is car 870, isn't it? Uh, 870, yes, ma'am, right, yes. Yeah. I have compartment B. Uh, compartment B right this way, ma'am. Uh, carry a bad boy? No, no, thanks. I- I'll carry it myself. Yeah, I'll put it right on the floor, ma'am. All right, thank you. About got in under the wire tonight, ma'am. What? What did you say, Porter? I say, uh, just got in under the wire tonight. The conductor's just about to holler all aboard. Yes, I thought it would be like that. There you are. Compartment B, yes, ma'am. That's all for the night, Porter. Uh, yes, ma'am. Good night. Oh, Porter. And yes, ma'am? Is, uh, is there anyone in compartment A? Uh, a gentleman. Just come in a few minutes ago, ma'am. I see. Uh, what time do we get in in the morning? Well, uh, we do in at 9 o'clock, ma'am. Thank you. Good night. Good night, ma'am. Uh-huh. That ain't so good. Oh, now your mouth is down to your knees. What's the matter? Well, that compartment B ain't going to be no relief to Sam Johnson's depression. <laughs> Nothing but a thank you, Porter, eh? Not even that. And she wanted plenty of questions after, too. Well, one more minute and we start rolling, Sam. Oh, thank goodness. I want to read me some more about that bank robbery. What bank robbery? Well, haven't you seen the papers? No. Well, the first national was held up this afternoon by a couple of bandits and robbed of $50,000. Ooh, that's a lot of money in any country. Yeah, sir. <laughs> I ain't got a chance yet to read all the details, but, but I see that the Inspector Kelly of the Detective Bureau, you know the new one who just got promoted? Yes. Well, he's sworn to track down the robbers, and that's the last thing he does. Is that so? 
Now, let me see your paper when you get through with it, Sam. I had to rush for it tonight and didn't have a chance to get one myself. Sure enough, Conductor Hall. I- I'll save it for you. Thanks. Well, pick up your yellow step, Sam. Yep. Here we go. All aboard! Well, look, that policeman blowing his whistle and motion until you to wait. So he is. What for, I wonder? Uh, he's pointing to that man running this way. I guess he wants for us to wait for him. Who is he that we should hold number 88 to? For him. All aboard. Wait. Wait for me. Wait. Hey, grab hold of this handrail. Now, what you... Hold it. Grab that rail, Bob. I got it. Now, hold on. Here, let me give you a hand. Hey, huh? Baby, you made it. Hold it. You know. Pleased to meet you, Inspector. I'm Hall, in charge of this train. What can I do for you? Now, we got a tip about half an hour ago. The first national bandits were catching your train tonight. What? On this train? Now, ain't that something? So I just grabbed a taxi and headed down to the station. Didn't think I'd make this train. To tell you the truth, I didn't think you would either. Uh, thanks for the hand. Well, I'll, I'll have to search your train, Conductor Hall. Of course. I'm just starting to check up myself. Uh, come along. I'll be right with you. Uh, oh, George. Me? Yes, uh, isn't your name George? No, my name is Sam. <laughs> oh, okay, Sam. I'll get this. Don't breathe a word to anyone about uh, who I am or what I'm doing on board this train, you savvy? No, suppose. Not me. Well. A claim of the village gossip compared to me. But... Good. All right, conductor. Come on, let's go. Uh-uh. Lower 10. Now, what does that old fool do? Who is it? Eddie, let me in. Come on in. Well, we're on our way, huh? Yeah. I was worried to see you wouldn't make it, Ed. Hey, I said I'd be on this train tonight. Yeah, I know, but I was scared every minute until the porter told me you were here. The porter told you? What did he say? Well, I, I asked him if compartment A was occupied, and he said, yes, the gentleman arrived just a few minutes before me. Well, Lottie, you suddenly got a hand at the little end. Noon, we didn't have a time to bless ourselves with. Now, 50 grand and good old government greenback. Yeah. Oh, gee, it almost seems too good to be true. Uh, it is true, though. And it's only the beginning of our luck, baby. Why, <laughs> when we get that shy, Red will get us a hideaway until this little job blows over, and then, then me and you will start knocking over some real potatoes. Hmm. 50 grand ought to last us a long time, Ed. That's the way Eddie King's got things planned, baby. Oh, we've got to be careful, honey. Careful? Of what? Well... We don't want some flat foot to get on our trail. How can we spend anything until we're sure that the coast is clear? Nobody's trailed it so far, have they? No, but... Well, then, what chance is there anybody getting wise to it? If we watch our steps. Of course, now, I ain't saying that we got to go where John Law might spot us, but there's plenty of places in Chai where we can get rid of these hot green goods. All right, Ed. But just be careful, won't you? Say, you ever know me to take chances? Didn't I have this job planned out right? Just take a gander at tonight's paper, Dad. Those two of them describe us the same, did they? No, they didn't. No, and that big badge and handcuffs, boys, is watching all state roads and outgoing steamships. <laughs> Ain't that a laugh? <laughs> you sure outsmarted them, honey. Yeah, and the payoff was coming as the train separates. I strolled in just before we're due to get underway, and you do the same. We sure worked it neat. Close to the starting time at the port of Eden Mont, but I just got in under the wire. Mm. Who could ever connect us up with each other? Nobody. Yeah, I hope nobody saw you coming here, Ed. Not a chance. Not a chance. Say, I gave that aisle a double O up and down before I stepped out of my cubby hole. The porter was going to answer his call bell. Just the same, honey. I, I don't think you'd all have taken a chance on being seen to me. Oh, forget it. Now, listen, what I come in here for was to tell you that I think we'd better store that swag in your room. And here, see? Some rude constable might flag the train and start looking for me. But why? Oh, just on general principles. So now I'll slide back and get the potatoes. Come in here again. Is the coast clear, Ed? Yeah. Like Wall Street on a Sunday morning. Now, what is going on in here? That 
lady in compartment B asked if there was anybody in compartment A when she comes on board, and the gentleman from A just come out of B and went back to A. Oh, I better tell Miss Kelly about this. Huh? Well, Inspector, we haven't found any suspects so far. No, but they must be on this train. I tell you, headquarters got the tip the two robbers would catch this train. Well, every one of your tips aren't always right, are they, Inspector? Well, I have a hunch this one is. Well, I understand you're sworn to track down the thieves if it's the last thing you do. That's right. Trying to make good on the new job, eh? Oh, I have a personal reason, Conductor. Well, I suspect a romance behind it. There usually is. Well, not in this case. Mr. Kelly. Mr. Kelly. Yeah? Sure. I think them robber folks is in my car. What? You do? Why? Well, uh, when she come on board, the lady in compartment B... She wanted to know if there was anybody in compartment A. And just now, the gentleman in A went in to see the lady and come back to his own compartment for a bag which he was being very particular to carry and said uh-huh. he wouldn't even let me put it in the rack. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Come on, Sam. Let's get back to your car. Do I have to do that, Inspector Church? Sure. Then you can run along and shine your shoes. Now... I knock on the lady's door and says it's me. And then when she opens the door, you go in. That's right. Go ahead now. Here we are. Uh, all right. Yeah, go. Yes, yeah, you go. The polar man. Well, what is it, boy? Thanks. Oh. Hey, what is that? Oh, look out for his gun, Ed. Ah, uh, you can't come in here like this. No. This woman's my wife. I'm not interested in that. What's in that bag? Oh. Who are you? I'm from headquarters. Oh, it's a cop, oh, Ed. So I have to open that bag myself, do you I? You keep your hands off of that oh, bag. Oh, please. Hmm, just as I thought. Currency. Well, what up? Oh, gee, Ed, we're sunk. It's a big house for us. Oh, who said so? I didn't come here to arrest you. You didn't? Then why did you come? As soon as I heard you'd pull the job, I said to myself, Kelly, my boy, you're in the wrong game. When I got the tip you'd be on number 88 to Chicago, I decided to join you. Lock the door, lady. We're going to split the 50,000 three ways. to read the amazing story of a policeman who trails thieves only to split their booty with them. It will appear in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly, the magazine distributed with all Hearst to Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. It will appear under the title, Police Detective, Chief by Day, Gangster Chief at Night. This is Wentworth announcing and turning the microphone over to your own announcer.